The next category is the books on the life of Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. We'll just rush through it fast. The first amongst the good seerahs that are available in English language and which is voluminous. It is Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam Encyclopedia of Seera. It comes in eight volumes. This is done by the Muslim Schools Trust in London, printed in UK. And this is a good mashallah, speaking in great detail about the seerah of Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Raik al-Maktoum, also the sealed nectar, again, done by Safiur Rahman al-Mubarak Puri. This Sheikh, alhamdulillah, also happened to be from India. And he expired recently. May Allah grant him Jannah. He's done a great work. There was a competition on writing books on the biography of the Prophet. Done by Muslim Wali Rabtal Alam Islamiya. It was done a couple of decades earlier. And this book won the award for the best book on the seerah of the Prophet Muhammad And it's from authentic sources. Alhamdulillah. Yet, even though he's a great scholar, yet there are some zaif hadith that have crept in here. So when you say authentic, means authentic, okay, but not. Because every scholar, when does research, he realizes it, okay, fine. A zaif hadith I quoted without verifying it and all. So there are a few zaif hadith even in this, but as a whole, it's authentic, as a whole about the life. So if you want to know from authentic sources, there are many books on the life of Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, but you have to see that the book is authentic. There are many books which are popular, but they have quoted even again. I don't know where to go and where to stop. In the seerah of Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, there are two types of seerah. One is seerah from history and one is seerah from a hadith only. Classifications of seerah of the Prophet, there are two types of books written. One book, okay, it's a historical fact. We wrote it down. Maybe right, maybe wrong. But some scholars say, no, we will only take from authentic hadith. Means khalas, authenticated. So if you read books which are taken only from authentic source, and one such kind of book is this, but this is not the one I'm talking about by the Arabic scholars. So seerah of the Prophet also, you have those group of scholars who consider the seerah only which are proven from the authentic hadith. That's it. Other scholars, they have taken Sahih hadith also, Zaif hadith, also historical facts, which is not passing the test of Sahih hadith. It has its value. It should be there. But as a hujja, we can only use the seerah which is written only from authentic sources. So when you say Quran and Sai Hadith, it includes the seerah of the Prophet also. But other books which talk about historical facts, history has its own way of saying right or wrong. But the science of Hadith is far superior than the science of history. It will take it lock, stock and barrel. In the historical facts, if you want to punch holes, you can punch a hundred. But in the science of Hadith, you cannot. If you don't know, you'll say, hey, uh, who said this said, even today, there are scholars who have got the Sanad of Bukhari. Okay, this was Bukhari. Bukhari wrote to so-and-so scholar. So-and-so scholar said to so-and-so. To so-and-so scholar. To Ziyar Rahman Azmi. And from Ziyar Rahman Azmi. So if you say that you have read Bukhari and if you have a Sanad, it will go to Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, this Sahaba, to that, to that, to that, to that. How many generations? 50, 60, 70, 80, I don't know. And Ziyar Rahman Azmi is one of the persons who also has this Sanad. And he may give to some of his students, may not give to some of his students. Okay, fine. This person, I testify that he has read Bukhari very well. So you have a son of understanding Bukhari. That's another. Not just going to any university. If you go to any university and you pass your bachelor's degree in Hadith, that doesn't mean you have that son of. And then that son of is authentic or not, there is another question. Because if one Ravi, one of the teacher is weak, class, son of is useless. Again. So many people have three, three, four, four sons. And Sheikh Ziyar Iman asked me, even he has many sons. He said, this is of mine most powerful, according to him. Even today, Quran can be recited what is right or wrong by Sanad. You know, everything, mashallah. The science of Islam is so perfect, alhamdulillah. So, Sira again, based on authentic hadith is more correct, more appealing than only based on history. Historical facts, is it clear? This is again the life of Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam by Tayya Al-Ismail. It's a good reading. 
This is again Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, his life based on the earlier sources by Martin Lings. Martin Lings also has written a very good book, mashallah. On Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. This is the life of the book by Haikal. It's a very famous book, Haikal, Haikal. This is again Sirat ibn Hasham, biography of the Prophet, abridged by Abdul Salam M. Harun. This is an abridged version. But this again, Sirat al Nabi. These were few books. There are many books. Thousands of books written on the seerah of Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. These are some of the ones that have been translated into English or directly written into English. Alhamdulillah. So we have three more sections. Again, if I have shown you five books, that doesn't mean these five only there. These five are few of the many books available in English language. Again, there is a difference between English and Arabic, but naturally the best books to be referred are the books in Arabic. They are from the authentic sources. And the written by scholars knowing Arabic is far superior. English comes as a second. Later on, English and Urdu also has a high value because there are many scholars in Urdu. But Arabic is number one. We'll come to the fourth section, Encyclopedia on Islam. Unfortunately, there are very few encyclopedia on Islam available in English. Very few. And one of the oldest, we'll come to it later on, the oldest one was by H. A. R. Gibb. It's not available here. This is the Encyclopedia on Islam by E. J. Brill. It's from Netherlands. And that was in eight volumes. It is very expensive. It was one of the first encyclopedia written on Islam. Unfortunately, the contributors, many or most of them were non-Muslims. So it has an oriental approach. Good for student of knowledge, otherwise no. Many things in it may not be correct. But it's there as a reference book available in English. The other one that came recently, recently again, recently means 20 years back because recently has different connotations. This is the Oxford Encyclopedia of Modern Islamic World taken out by the Oxford Press by John Esposito. And if you know John Esposito is a Christian and supposed to be a scholar on Islam, and not that I agree everything what he says, but he's, alhamdulillah, he's quite objective and many a time truthful, but can't agree with everything what he says. But it's a book worth reading. So in that encyclopedia, that's one of the encyclopedia done by Oxford in four volumes. It is there, but always best is to read from the authentic, the top scholars who are Muslims carry the bigger weight. Unfortunately, encyclopedias in English are hardly any. But this is much better than by H.A.R. Gibb. Much better. If you want to refer in English, this is one. There are many which are coming lately now in English. This is again the concise Encyclopedia of Islam by Cyril Glass. I'm just telling you because these were famous for not that the authentic, please. So H.A.R. Gibb, you have to be careful. I'm telling you because this was the only one available a couple of decades earlier. Now these have come out, but yet we have a lack of books on encyclopedia in English language. This again, Dictionary of Islam by Thomas Patrick Hughes. It's a dictionary of Islam. These were just a few encyclopedias. Now, lately, there are some that have come in the market. Here again, the footnote mentions, unfortunately, there are no comprehensive encyclopedias on Islam which have been completely written and edited by Muslims. Thus, we have to refer to the above mentioned encyclopedias, even though many a time Islam has been misrepresented. There's a footnote there. This is again mentioned 20 years back. Now, as I mentioned, there are more that have come, but yet not as voluminous as what has been done by these people. There's a section called as Arabic English Dictionary. As I told you, Arabic and English, Arabic is a very important language or rather the most important language. And it is very important that Adai should know Arabic as a language. I don't know Arabic as a language, a little bit here. Show you, show you, fine. I can manage my way through a little bit, but not as a language. Therefore, in our school, which we'll discuss on that day, mashallah, all our students from the Islamic International School, they learn Arabic from the age of three. Alhamdulillah. By the time they reach standard five, six, they can understand Quran to a great extent. By then they reach standard 9, 10, they can even translate portions of it, alhamdulillah. The lens is one of the 
very famous Linus lexicon again. It is not by a Muslim, but as a good reference source in eight volumes that goes to the root word and where does the word come from and the root word consists of three alphabets in Arabic and you put the Arab and how it got derived, etc. This is a dictionary from Arabic to English. Why I keep this? Because Arabic, we don't have that much of mastery. So when someone tries to pull a fast one, we have something with us where we can defend ourselves. If we disagree with the person, sometimes we get into argument. So this is a good reference for knowing Arabic. Arabic to English. It's a lexicon. There's Lisan al-Arabiya. This is by Hans Ware, a dictionary of modern written Arabic. The last section, we're running short of time, is the concordance and index of the glorious Quran. The concordance and the index of the glorious Quran. Number one is al mojam al-Mufaris. This has been very helpful for me. When you want to know, but now you have other means, now you have computer, it's easier, but at that time when it wasn't so advanced, 20 years back, this was a good tool for me. Mojam al-Mufaris. What does it do if you want to know how many times this word occurs in the Quran? Then you go there, you read the Arabic, it tells you all the references of the Quran. How many times the word Muslim is referred, you get the ayat there. How many times Nisa is mentioned, you get the word there. How many times Kalb is mentioned, you get the reference there. It's in one volume. It's only Arabic. So if you know Arabic, it's good. If you can read also, you can manage. That's a very good reference where you can go and you can see how many times this particular word has come. Today, there are softwares available, but yet this has its own value as a book. Print media has a different value. A software has a different value. Each has its pros and cons. We'll discuss it later on, inshallah. But you want to know how many times this has occurred in the Quran and you want to find particular verse of the Quran. It's helpful in finding verses by using this type of mojam. Then you have concordance. Uh, this is the concordance and index of the Holy Quran. Same. Muhammad Fad Abdul Baki. It's complete in Arabic. Mojam al Mufaris. The index come concordance for the Holy Quran. This is by Al Haj Khan Bahadur. These are concordances in English available. I have not used them. Much, it's there in English language. I prefer going to that original that has better references in the Mojam. This is the concept of the Holy Quran topic leading by Fatih Osman. There is easy dictionary of the Quran by Sheikh Abdul Karim Parikh, dictionary of the Quran. And there are many books again in this category. The other books apart from Quran, Hadith, then dictionaries, concordance, and Arabic. I've just mentioned a few books, just the basics. This is Kitab al-Tawheed by Sheikh al-Islam, Muhammad bin Abdul Wahab, Rahimullah. Again, a very important book. Has been criticized by many Muslims because of its authenticity, but it's a very good book on Tawheed and one of the most important books, Kitab al-Tawheed. There's a series we had on Kitab al-Tawheed on Peace to You by Sheikh Salim al-Amri. Tawheed is the most important factor we'll read. So this is a book on Kitab al-Tawheed. This is Takhiyatul Iman, Strengthening of the Faith by Shah Ismail Shaheed. There's a book called The Major Sins. That's al Kabair. The Major Sins. And very important for a person to know what are the major sins. This is a book on the major sins by Imam al Dhabi. The Stories of the Prophets, again by Ibn Qasir. This is the stories of the prophets. If you want to know the stories mentioned in the Quran of the prophets, beside Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, it's given here. So if you want to know all the stories mentioned in the Quran of the prophets, this is a very good book, definitely book. We also have a series for the children on the stories of the prophets. Now, coming to the book of the Khulfa Rashidin, there are many books in the companion of the prophet. One of the most important and one of the best written books on the biography of the Khulfa Rashidin is by Sheikh Dr. Ali Muhammad al Sallabi. And he has written on all the four Khulfa Rashidin. This is the book, biography on Hazrat Abu Bakr. May Allah be pleased with him. This is Hazrat Usman. May Allah be pleased with them 
both and this Hazrat Ali, may Allah please with him. This book by Sallabi is one of the good books in which, as I said, when you write a biography, many a time people use historical facts and even quote Zayf Hadith. He has taken care, although I cannot say 100% is Sahi, but almost all, majority of the Hadith and the reference is taken uh, from the authentic sources. It's not only authentic Hadith, but historical facts also there in it. But he has tried to see that most of it is authentic. There are various biographies of the Khulafa Rashidin. The one written by Sallabi is one of the most popular and one of the most authentic available in the market. And if you want to read about the life history of the four Khulafa Rashidin, Hazrat Abu Bakr, Hazrat Umar, Hazrat Usman, and Hazrat Ali, may Allah be pleased with them all. Inshallah, this book is a good reference. This was in short talking about few sources, few books. It's a drop in the drop. It's not a drop in the ocean, a drop in the drop only. Our library is also very small, having only about 20,000 books, very small library. We just got some of it here. It's an ocean. One thing to be noted, the more knowledge you get, the more you know, you realize, the less you know. It's a very important thing. The more you know, you realize, the less you know. And as age is crossing, I, there's nothing we know. Initially, when the Aisha, I think, is, okay, Quran, khalas, I know whole Islam. When you read the Quran, oh, there are so many tafasir. Okay, then you, oh, there's also hadith, hadith, okay. I know hadith, oh, hadith, zaif, zaif, this, that. Then the more you know, you realize, the less you know. Believe me, there's so much to learn. As time passes, you come to know that you have wasted your life. Knowledge is something which never ends. And when we meet these scholars, we really feel that what they have achieved, we have not even scratched the surface. We are far behind. And I crave that may Allah give us the time, the energy, the strength to acquire and implement this. Acquiring is one thing, implement is something. May Allah accept our efforts. We have not even scratched maybe the dust on the surface, leave us at the surface. We haven't scratched the dust of the surface. Therefore, I'm telling you, this session, this training program is not about knowledge. Others may claim this is knowledge base, that base, that base, etc. We didn't have the time for introduction. Others have told you what is the difference in our training program compared to others. That's the reason something you can gain. MashaAllah, many of you are young or younger than me, even I'm young as I say. You have yet a lot to gain. Some are 19 years, some are 20, 22, 30. MashaAllah, the eldest is, MashaAllah, Brother Kamruddi. MashaAllah, give competition to me. MashaAllah. In age, 47. MashaAllah. 47, no? 47, 3 fourth. I'm 50 and a quarter. So you have the time now. Therefore, I tell my son, gain knowledge. This is the age. We think, where have we wasted our time in learning medicine? If we had learned at least a small portion of this, it would have benefited us much more. But again, Allah's help is there. Allah's mercy is there. Allah's kindness is there. Otherwise, we are nothing. All this is only due to the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So now you have the time, make the most use of it. Knowledge is power. I started my talk by saying, Rabbi Zidni Alma. That, oh my Lord, increase me in knowledge. From Surah Taha. Who knows the reference? Surah Taha. 114. Good, mashallah. This was part of the homework, correct? Oh, my Lord, increase me in knowledge. So pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that may He give us more knowledge so that we could spread His deen and may He make us utilize to the best of ability. Inshallah, we'll have a short break of half an hour for tea. We'll resume by 11.30. Maybe 25 minutes break. 11.30? so that we are less behind. 
inshallah. So 11.30 we'll be back in this auditorium. Inshallah, we break. Wa akhirat dawan, alhamdulillah,